Greetings friend, I will give you three amazing tips you need to know about XY wings and why the green cell is so important to this Sudoku. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, we want to focus on column six first and block five because we can do some initial solving right there. You notice there's only three possibilities remaining in column six. We have a two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need a one, eight, and a nine. We'll have a nine and eight right there. That means this cell has to be a one. And since we're looking for X, Y wings, we do want to fill out any by value cell because that's my first amazing tip. You need to know that X, Y wings are composed of three by value cells or BVCs as I like to call them. Now we can do some more solving in here. You'll notice that we need a two, five, and six. Well, I have the five and six right there. It means this has to be your two. And then we have a five in row four, so that's gotta be your five. And the last digit in block five is going to be a six. Okay, and we can do a little bit of marking as well. We got the one in column four, a one right here. And so what I'm gonna do is what's called Snyder notation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for Kent. Mark it, and in case you solve one of these cells, we can solve the other one right away. Gives us some clues to about how to proceed with this puzzle. We can now look at the twos, because we're going to have quite a bit of solving that we can do with these twos. You got a two here in column three, two in column one, this two in row six, only one place for two in block four. And then with this two, we can actually solve this cell for two right there in block six. And then with these twos, again, we can solve for two right here. And with these twos in column seven and nine, we can solve for two up in block three and take care of all of the twos. Now let's look at the ones. You got this one cutting right through block six. There's only one place left for a one now, so we can mark that right away. And with this one, we can actually mark for a one right here. And so then what you'll notice is we can look here in column eight and go, we only have two possibilities. We got a one and a three. Well, I just solved for a one in the block. So that's gotta be your three and that's gotta be your one. Just place in the Snyder one and allow us to solve for a one right there. All right, after solving that one, you look across here and we got another naked pair of a four and a seven. So I'll mark that four seven because what it does is now restricts the four and seven to these two cells. So they can't be anywhere else along row five. And so in these two cells, the only two candidates missing from row five are a six and an eight. And since I have a six right there, I can solve this for six and solve this for an eight. Join the Smarty Party by clicking on the pinned comment and you can get my December puzzle pack featuring Sudoku pairs like this. Send me the correct solution and I'll give you a shout out at the end of the month. Just like Carol Emmerich, John Brown, Aaron Wells, and Yoshi Broshi, who solved November's puzzle pack. Okay, after solving this one here, the six here, let's look at these two sixes, because we can solve for a six up there in block one. And now we can focus on the threes. We got these two threes and this three. There's only one possibility for a three in block seven. So we can mark that. And then with this three, we can solve for a three here which leaves us with a seven, nine naked pair. Okay, some more clues with the threes. We got the three here and here. So there's only two possibilities for a three in block two. And then with this three and the three in row two, only two possibilities for a three here. So I'll make those marks. And then with the fours, we have a four cutting across here with these two fours, only one place for a four in block seven. So we can mark that. And now with these two fours, we have Two possibilities for four, I'll mark the Snyder force in block eight. And now this is kind of cool here. Let's look at the fives. You got this five coming down column two. And so the fives are limited to two spots in block seven. And that's okay, but you notice they're also in the same row. So they're in the block and in the same row, that's a pointing pair. It's a type of locked cannon. And what it means is now the fives can't be in any of these spots because you put a five here you'd have no place to put a five in block seven. So with this five and these two fives, 
we know fives can't be in these three spots. You have this five, a five can't be here either. So we can solve for five right here, displacing that Snyder four. And so since we put the Snyder mark, we're easy, easily able to solve for a four right away. Other thing you want to see with these fives is you have this five cutting across. You have this five coming up, column seven and row two. Well, the fives are limited to the same two spots as the threes. So whenever you see a Snyder notation and they're in the same two candidates, same two cells, you know that's a hidden pair. What it says is that those candidates are limited to the same two cells in this block. And so we can mark that as a hidden pair three, five. And then what's remaining is a one, four, nine in block three. And I want to fill that out because these are all by value cells. So you got a four here means that can't be a four. You got a one already in column nine, so that can't be a nine. And now I said this is a BVC. How am I going to show you that? Well, you might notice this. You got this nine coming up, column two. And so the nines are limited to two spots here in block two. That makes them a pointing pair. And so this nine cannot exist right there because if you put a nine in that spot, you wouldn't have a nine to go anywhere in block two. So that is where the nine pointing pair comes from. Okay, let's go down here and look at the sixes. We've got these two sixes and this six, only one possibility for six in block eight. And now with these two sixes and this six, we can solve for six here, getting closer to the green cell. And we're gonna make some more restrictions around that green cell and get to my second tip. Okay, let's look at the eights. You have an eight, Coming up, column three, you have this eight cutting across row one. So the eights are limited to two spots in block one, and that makes them a pointing pair because they're in the same column. So the eight, when this eight means the eights are limited to these two places in block seven. Okay, and then with this eight, eights are going to be limited to two spots here in block eight. And then in block nine, with these two eights, we got eights limited to two spots in block nine. So we're getting closer. Now we know that there's an eight somewhere here in the green cell. So let's figure this out. We did the nines. Other thing we want to see is with this nine coming down, there's two possibilities for a nine right here in block eight. So there's eight going on. There's some nines going on. What can we do about that? Uh, I want to circle back and fill out a couple more BVCs here. We got a one, two, three, five, six, seven, in row two, we need a four, eight, and a nine. Since I have a four right there, that's gonna only be an eight or nine. And since I have a nine right here, this can only be a four or an eight. So all by value cells. And now let's look closer at block nine here. This is where the green cell is. What we can do in there is a seven, eight, or a nine. Because of this eight, that can't be an eight. And so then we also want to fill out here block eight, right? It looks like we need a seven, eight, or nine. I got a nine here. So that's a seven, eight. And because of the eight in column four, this has got to be a seven, nine. A lot of BBCs, a lot of familiar ones. This brings us up to our second amazing tip. And the tip is most XY wings will have two of the three BBC paired possibilities in the same block. Okay, so we can focus down here and see, can we make an X, Y wing out of block eight and nine? And sure enough, if you look, we're looking for three paired possibilities. You have a eight, nine right here, and we'll put that in blue. And you'll see that the eight, nine shares a nine with the seven, nine right there. You can put that in orange, but it also, shares the block and shares the eight with the seven eight right there and so we have the three paired possibilities we have a seven eight a seven nine and an eight nine we have one of those digits or one of those cells the eight nine cell sees the other two so this is called a pivot and these are called the pinchers and what that means is logically if you put an eight right here this cell has to be a seven you put a nine right here, this cell has to be a seven. And so no matter what's in this cell, one of these orange cells contains a seven. And that is an X, Y wing. And what we can do with that is we can remove a seven from any cell that sees both. And what cell sees both of these? 
it's the green cell right here. So we can remove a 7 from that cell. Now, you might have thought that the green cell was the pivot of our first XY wing. It's not, but it does allow us to make a solve here. And if you like these tips, consider buying me a coffee like Job Nutter 101 and Jeff Parnell. Or you can just click on the Super Thanks button right here in YouTube, like Kenneth Muted. I really appreciate it, and I invest the money back into smart hobbies to make better content for you. But this does bring us up to our third tip. Okay, we found an XY wing. We are able to remove a can from right there. We have another XY wing we need to find, and it involves the green cell again. And so my third amazing tip is that the XY wings that involve three blocks are the hardest to spot, and they only allow one cell elimination. With this one, we could have eliminated up to five cells. We could have, if there's nothing in these three cells, we could have made eliminations, and then these two cells as well. With an XY wing that's in three different blocks, you can only make one elimination, and that's what we're going to need to look for. So you notice the 7, 8, and this 8, 9 are two of the three paired possibilities. We need to find a 7, 9 that sees one of these. Okay, so we have the 7, 8, and we have the 7, and this 8, 9. If you look up here, that is not a 7, 9. Okay, it's outside the block. It shares a 9, but it doesn't share the 4 and the 7 don't share each other. However, if you look at this cell, you'll notice that the 8, 9 shares a 9 with this 4, 9, but then the 4, 9 shares the 4 with this cell. So now, if we look at this as our pivot and these two cells as our pinchers, it looks like we have all three paired possibilities. We have a 4, 8, a 4, 9, and an 8, 9. The blue cell sees the two orange cells. And so we know if this is a 4, that has to be an 8. If this is a 9, that has to be an 8. We have an XY wing that can eliminate an 8 from any cell that sees both orange. And since it's in three different blocks, they can only see one cell. This cell right here, but we can eliminate with certainty an 8. Because if you put an 8 right here, you make this cell 4, you make this cell a 9, and you'd have nothing to put in the blue cell. So we know we can eliminate the 8 from right there. If you want to learn more about XY wings, check out this tutorial. But this is going to allow us to make some more solving. We are not out of the woods yet. We still have plenty of cells to solve, but let's see what this does for us because we know immediately we can solve this for a 7, which displaces that Snyder 8, displaces that Snyder 9. Okay, we just took care of all that. And now with this 8 displacing this Snyder 8, we can solve for an 8 here in block 7. And with the 7 cutting across, we can solve for a 7 right there. Now the 7 is going to allow us to finish row 9. This can be a 9. This could be an 8, and this is going to be a 7. Let's work our way up to block 6. With this 7, that's got to be a 4, and that's got to be a 7. I love to disambiguate these naked pairs, which is what we are doing right now. And with this 4, now we can solve all the way across row 2, because that's got to be the 9. That's got to be the 8, getting rid of that Snyder mark, and this is going to be a 4 for us. And this 9 is going to allow us to figure finish out the rest of this naked pair, because that has to be your 1 now. And that's going to be your four. Okay, where can we go from here? We have this seven. That means we can solve for the nine and seven, disambiguating that. And, I, and I'm trying to get rid of all of those BVCs that helped us get to the XY wings. Well, this eight, that means this has to be the nine. So we're going to remove that I mark nine right there. And then what we can notice is we have another full house. Eight cells filled out. With certainty, we can solve this for a seven. So what we need is a three or an eight. And if you look here, you got your eight. And so this is going to be the eight displacing that Snyder three. You can solve for the three. This is ambiguating the three and the five right there. And there's your three in the corner. All right. And now we need a one and we need a five there's my one so you got the one here you got the five right there displacing the snyder five so we can solve for the five solve for the nine i don't see a nine up here so i'm going to pull this nine up and go all right the nine goes and block one right there and this last cell has to be a seven check out this video 
which features the original Sudoku that inspired Julian to create this puzzle. I'm excited about the Smarty Party community, and I appreciate you investing in the future of this channel. Thank you, Julian Locke, for this amazing Sudoku, and thank you so much for watching.